It's my honor. I love speaking about Dr. Gorey. I'm his cheerleader. <laughs> that's great. Um, he's forgotten by many people, and that's probably because he had very few descendants. Um, a descendant if, of a famous person upholds their legacy and makes it prominent. And Dr. Gorey had very few descendants, so I like to think of myself as his great, 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 maybe adopted granddaughter. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. I discovered in 2017 that Dr. Gorey did not have a biography. A student that I was tutoring asked me for a recommendation of a biography for a scientist. He was interested in science, and the first person I thought of was John Gorey, and I searched guess what? He had no biography in print since 1982. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked after spending seven years teaching at John Gorey Junior High School. I was sh shocked that he had no biography in print and his statues in the statuary hall. So I called the state park and I said, is anybody writing a biography? No, but would you please do it? <laughs> They contacted um, the University of Florida. I heard from Dr. Duff at the University of Florida College of Medicine. He encouraged me to do it. And they all said, if you don't do it, who will? You need to do this. You know about more about John Gorey than anybody. Please write this biography. At that point, because I graduated from the University of Florida, I couldn't turn them down. Um, it was a project that was turned down by other authors, as I understand, citing that there would be no profit to be earned on Dr. Gorey's biography. But that shouldn't be of concern to anybody that knows about John Gorey. He died penniless. So why should I make money on his biography? I'd like to break even one day, but that's not a big deal to me. Dr. Gorey was an amazing humanitarian. When I first started teaching at John Gorey Junior High School, I asked my fellow teachers, well, tell me about John Gorey. I knew nothing about him. Why is the school named for John Gorey? And they said, oh, he invented air conditioning. But his life is much more than that. He saw problems and worked to solve them. And when he didn't have a platform to solve some of these problems, and he was elected to city council in Apalachicola and later elected mayor, he then had a platform. And so this was, although he never really had a desire to be an elected official, he thought, well, this is how I can improve the health of the community. So he's an amazing person, a very giving person. Um, we should all emulate Dr. Gorey. If we did, a lot more great things would happen. I have met two of his descendants who are extremely proud of his work. He was actually born in Nevis in the Caribbean, uh, the island of Nevis. And um, it is believed, although I wasn't there, John Gorey's mother was a slave from Spain. And on her way to America with her master, it is believed that they made a stop there perhaps for supplies and that that's where he was born. They later, as a small child, you know, an infant probably, we don't know for sure, went to Charleston, South Carolina. And Charlestown, Nevis, and Charleston, South Carolina are often confused, but they're two different places, as you know. So he was born in Charlestown, Nevis, and lived and grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. His story is, when you think about this, his, his mother was a slave, and his statue now stands in the U.S. Capitol Statuary Hall. Wow. And that's an amazing story. It really is. He became interested in medicine as a teenager, um, seeing soldiers that came back from the Revolutionary War with injuries. And he worked in an apothecary, which is like going to CVS today. He worked in an apothecary and bled patients and administered deworming medications and things like that. And it was Dr. Green at the pharmacy that helped him get into medical school. And you think medical school is only three years in duration. No undergraduate college, you didn't do that then. No. He didn't, he probably went to some sort of schooling up to the high school age, but went to medical school and must have really knocked their socks off because he was admitted to the school and he was one of their most outstanding graduates ever. Hardly two cents to row together. And Ty, you know what's so interesting? I have asked dozens of HVAC and refrigeration and ice professionals in the last few years, who invented the ice machine? Who invented, who patented the first air conditioning system? And they always say, Willis Carrier. One exception, one 
HVAC technician said John Gorey. But all the rest of them think it's Willis Carrier. Carrier is credited with the invention of modern air conditioning. It's Dr. Gorey's research principles and patents which changed the world. And I hope that somehow he knows that. But I don't speak to the dead. <laughs> right, and Willis Carrier was just a teenager when Dr. Gorey received his patents. Wow. Um, the goal really was purely to improve the health of the community and start with the community and if he could commercialize this machine, he would save maybe millions of people from food poisoning and disease. It was not really understood what caused the tropical diseases that he was so interested in because people didn't believe in things they couldn't see. Dr. Gorey had a very crude microscope, unable to visualize that viruses or plasmodiums, which are the causative agents of those diseases. So he was in a situation where a lot of people would listen to him and say, you know, if we don't see it, we don't believe it. <laughs> Think how many millions of people were employed in refrigeration, ice machines, and air conditioning. It's, it's a part of the economy of our world. He never foresaw this, you know, and it's sad that he really, when he died, he was heartbroken. He felt like he was a failure, but no scientist is ever a failure because you build on knowledge, and we built on knowledge as he built on knowledge. So he wasn't a failure, but he was, he pretty much felt like that. Well, it had to start somewhere, and the struggle that ensued as he made this plan to build this first machine, I can only imagine. I've actually seen the ice machine in the Smithsonian, and there's no way building that today, even today, would have been a small project. It would have been a huge project even today. This thing is it's very large and very heavy, and he did it all with no power equipment. He had this vision, and he was determined to make this machine. It took eight hours to freeze a barrel of ice, oh. but he, he never stopped thinking about it and the impact that he might make on mankind. He was more concerned with his fellow man than he ever was of himself. Very little money. Um, as you know, physicians were paid with a, a jar of jam or a dozen eggs back then. They weren't paid money. It was, he had, a very poor existence. He didn't make much money either as, as a physician or even as the postmaster. He was the postmaster in Apalachicola as well. So he didn't make much money, and but that didn't bother him. His concern was his community and the health of his community. When I first was transferred to John Gorey, it was a pivotal point in my life. And I'll always remember his legacy uh, to think that in Florida and in the South, you had to hunt every other day or you didn't eat. Um, everything was dried or salted to be preserved. That's not a healthy way to live. Refrigeration is much healthier. And Dr. Gorey said prevention is always preferable to cure. And he saw refrigeration as a way to prevent food poisoning, which was a huge problem in the South. Huge. Well, it's an amazing invention. The investors in the North just yeah. could not see the potential for yeah. mechanical cooling. They well, they had all the ice up there. They, they did, didn't, yeah. Uh, you know, they and didn't then the ice king stabbed him in him. the back. He saw that as a huge moral obstacle to his work. Um, he was ridiculed in the press. He didn't deserve that. Well, he was making too much money selling ice. He didn't want anybody making yeah, ice. Yeah, they didn't want any competition yeah. um, because they were sending ice all over the place. Yes. With without you know refrigeration, you know we we just people in Florida you know had to go hunt every day. You, you could butter butter spooled in two days. Yeah. And at this time, ice was twenty one ninety twenty one dollars a pound. Wow. You know, I mean, you had to be very wealthy to afford that. But he did make his first barrel of ice and present it to the public in this French Bastille celebration that they had in Apalachicola. And they brought out all of this wine that was chilled by chunks of ice. Wow. And people were just, where did you get all this ice? I mean, in, in today's money, that ice would have cost probably $1,000. Wow. He really worked hard. He died penniless and brokenhearted. Um, some people say he died from depression because of the fact that he just faced so many obstacles. Um, the people with the money in the North, the capitalists, 
saw no value in his inventions. They had plenty of ice in the north. Um, they didn't get have problems with food spoilage and things like that. So they really didn't see the value in his inventions. And um, he couldn't persuade him of that. He wasn't a businessman and he wasn't a salesman for himself or his work. So he was just rejected over and over. And rejection's tough. It really is. He was last seen sitting on his porch at his house, wrapped in a blanket. It's believed he had malaria. But he had he not been so brokenhearted and despondent and feeling like a failure, he might have survived that. I think if he had lived um, a, a lifespan of today, maybe lived into his 90s, he would have seen the reward that his work would have brought. But he died very young, and it's sad that he believed he was a failure. But um, when he died, there were a few of his associates and colleagues that respected him greatly, and they spoke at his funeral saying, you know, there is the man who is outstanding above all of us. He was always recognized in any group to be a winner, somebody that worked hard, um, was not pretentious, had endless, tireless effort for others. And he was a very deep thinker. He used to walk along the Apalachicola Bay every night where it was cool. And during that time, I would imagine what was going through his mind was, how can I help my fellow man? What can I do to make the world a better place? He didn't think about himself. He thought about others. What an outstanding person. Um, I often think, if I met him today, what would I ask him? And, oh, I would have a dozens and dozens of questions. But I think he'd be really proud of this biography. His records, his medical records, his professional, his research records were accidentally destroyed in the Civil War. If we had those records, I think we'd have a lot more wonderful things to say. There's a lot been written about Dr. Gorey over the years, and I found conflicting information. What I did was I kept a slash chart of dates, and whatever date I found the most, most frequently, that's the date I used in the biography. I think you can always do better, but there came a point where it was, it was time to publish it. My artist, Karen Atkins, made a beautiful cover. I'm amazed she didn't win a, uh, an award of some type for the watercolor artwork she did for the cover. Um, she was dedicated to the project, and I had a lot of um, people that encouraged me. My husband encouraged me, my daughter encouraged me, and a lot of the alumni of John Gorey Junior High School were behind me too. They feel like this is part of their school. John Gorey Junior High School was not air conditioned until 1988, and it's oh, really? said that it never worked well. Um, and the school closed in 1997, huge investment. Um, but he would have been really proud when that cold air first came through those pipes. Um, it was a big day for that school, a lot of chatter. Everybody was all excited about it and said, wow, Dr. Gorey would be so proud to see this, and he would have been. Um, since the school closed, a lot of people have forgotten about John Gorey Junior High School and John Gorey. Um, even though a Liberty ship was launched from the Jacksonville shipyards named the SS John Gorey. Yeah. So John Gorey is a big part of Jacksonville, but people were forgetting about it. So this biography not only recognizes the legacy of John Gorey, but also it recognizes the legacy of that junior high school that was open from 1924 to 1997. One of my very dearest friends was a librarian at this school for her entire career, and her name was Jean Powell, and she encouraged me every day. It was my honor, it was my true honor to write this biography, uh, especially when you consider that no one else was willing to take on the project. I was proud to teach at John Gorey Junior High School, and I always welcome any interest in him. I would like to do a laboratory book, a basic laboratory ideas for teachers that utilize Dr. Gorey's principles. I think that would be really a great project. How many students have come through your classroom? Thousands, thousands. And whenever I had the opportunity to teach about John Gorey or thermodynamics, air conditioning, because of what I was teaching, I would just insert it in there. Oh, by the way, since we're talking about cooling the air today, this is, this is John Gorey, and he invented the ice machine and air conditioning, and this is his statue that's in the Statuary Hall. Um, 
I try to get it into all kinds of conversations. I'm retired. I don't teach school anymore. Any teachers out there, if you're not too far from me, I'm, I'd love to come to your classroom. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. I'd love to do that. You can reach me on the John Gorey Junior High School Facebook page. Send me a message. Or you can go to my Facebook, my own Facebook, Linda Hansen Caldwell and talk to me that way. I currently live in Ocala. The publisher knows how to get in touch with me as well. And then where can they find copies of your book? Amazon or through the publisher, Atlantic Publishing Group. If you haven't visited the John Gorey State Park Museum, please do so. There's a lot of great artifacts in there and the staff is great. They'd love to talk to you about Dr. Gorey. Joshua Hudson is the manager of the John Gorey State Park and He's wonderful. Great. Thank you so much for spending Thank time you. with us. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Please promote the book whenever possible. I want to do an elementary school version. It's written. Um, I've sent it back to the same publisher. The, pres the president of the publishing company died, and so they're not taking any new projects right now, but they promised me they'd take it. And the title of the elementary school version is Florida's Coolest Doctor, John Gorey. So I want that to be published. It's another bunch of money for me to put out there and probably not break even, even on. But it's just real important because elementary schools in um, third and fifth grade have to write a biogra biographical book report and also in eighth grade and also in 11th grade. So it's important to have these books in the libraries. I did not self-publish the book because and I, I might have been more successful monetarily if I'd done that, but I did not self-publish the book because self-published books are not accepted by libraries or public entities. Oh, I didn't know that. So it would not have been able to be purchased and sold in the state park, oh. any state museum, any public school library oh. or public state. library, and I wanted it to be in libraries. So he was born on the way to America. How much more patriotic do you get than that? You know, his mother was a slave. She must have been a wonderful woman to raise such a wonderful young man all by herself. You know, he never knew his father. Wow. I mean, it, I, you just put all that together and you think, wow, how could anybody have grown up to be such an outstanding person and such unenviable um, background? 